Hey guys, this is John from Sonic Drive Studio. Thanks for tuning into this channel. I recently released a video in which I demonstrate the Fractal Audio XFX and AX8 in multiple styles. This includes tones ranging from pristine cleans to heavy downtune metal. I've put a link to that video in the description below and I recommend watching that before you view this video. I'll be doing more of these videos for different platforms such as Helix Native, The Kemper, etc. So please subscribe if you want to see more in the future. In this tutorial series, I'm going to go over the presets with you and show what kind of processing I did in Cubase to get the parts to sit in the mix with the rest of the instruments. This first episode will focus on the first two tones of the video, which were the clean tones. The very first tone is a clean tone using the passive humbucker neck pickup in my Line 6 JTV 59 Variax guitar. It's actually a digital modeling guitar, but I really like the passives, so uh, I use those a lot. I was going for a solid and clear pristine tone with this one with a lot of body. We're starting off the chain with the input noise gate, which is on in all my presets. I always set the attack and release to the fastest settings because that works well for my tones and keeps the noise away. The only thing that tends to change between presets is the threshold control. For example, for clean tones, I tend to keep this set a little lower to preserve more of the softer dynamics, but with really high gain tones, I turn it up a bit more because the noise floor gets higher with high gain. Plus for high gain metal tones you often don't need all the little nuances because the playing tends to get less dynamic anyway. I almost always set the ratio to about 3. Next up is a compressor block which I almost always use for clean tones. It's basically there to even out the dynamics of the guitar itself before hitting the amp. This method gives you a little more control over the amount of drive the dynamics of your playing allows and it evens out the dynamics giving you a little bit of a smoother sound overall. Input level is set to instrument. The comp control is dependent on how loud you play and the guitar used, etc. So experiment with this yourself to find a good amount that still sounds natural. I usually aim for 1 to 3 dBs of gain reduction. The attack is turned up a little to let some of the transients through, but the release is set at its fastest setting. I'm also using the filter to remove some unwanted low muddiness. Also, auto is turned off. Now let's check out the amp settings. There's a wide range of amps available in the AxeFX and AX8. And this time I went for something a bit new to me, which is the Captain Hook A1 model, or 1A model. I found that this model had a very clear and solid sound that was easy to tweak, meaning that not much tweaking was needed. Input drive is set to 4 to keep things clean. I cut some bass and mids because the neck humbucker pickup in my guitar had plenty of warm body but we still want this guitar to fit the mix and not overshadow the bass guitar too much. I added some treble and presence to make the sound a little bit more clear and sparkly, and I also slightly raised the uh, bright cap value to further enhance the top end. This control is very powerful, and I recommend trying this out to increase the clarity of the guitar. Moving on to the cab lock. I'm using an Ohnhammer V30 IR from the Bogner Oversized 2x12 pack. In this instance, I'm using the Ohnhammer 1 quick start file. I usually stick to the quick start folders because to my ears, they tend to have the most balanced sound anyway. Check this cab out if you're looking for a warm but big sounding 2x12 with pronounced mids and a defined roar. The low cut is set to about 80 Hz to remove some unwanted sub lows. And I also tend to do this with all my presets. Then finally, I'm using a reverb block to enhance the 3D-ness or depth of the sound. The Recording Studio C algorithm was used, and I uh, use that often because it has a very realistic and roomy sound to it. It gives you back some of that much desired amp in the room sound. I always set the quality to high. Time is usually set to around 1 to 1.1. The mix control varies. For clean tones I like settings at around 20%, but for heavy tones I tend to lower that to around 10 or 11% with a time setting of 1. Moving on to the clean single coil sound. For this tone I used my American Special Fender Stratocaster with Texas Specials and a Maple Fretboard. This guitar has a very pronounced and snappy or clear sound. I used the fourth setting which is an in-between the neck and middle pickup type tone. The input gate and compressor settings are exactly the same as the previous tone. The amp I've chosen for this is the 65 Bass Guy Bass Amp. I was looking for something with a bit more of a classic fendery type glassy tone. The bass guy amps are great for this, but they can also get quite dirty, hence the lowered input drive setting here. 
The EQ controls are not set to extreme values. I'm just adding some bass to add body to the sound and removing some mids and treble to keep the sound from getting too shrill. Then for the cab lock, I'm using an Ohnhammer 4x10 Superverb file with the C10R option. This is one of my favorite Fendery type speaker options for that classic Stevie Ray Vaughan or early John Mayer type sound. This time I'm using the Ohnhammer 2 mix file, which tends to have a little less top end to compensate for the brightness of the guitar. And again, the low cut is set to around 70 to 80 Hertz to remove unwanted lows. After the amp block, I'm simulating a classic spring reverb with the medium spring algorithm. Quality is set to high again, time is set to 2, and mix is set to about 10% to keep the guitar from swimming in the reverb. And after that, I also added the usual Recording Studio C to add some natural room sound. No post-processing was done on these parts aside from some analog summing modeling with Slate Digital's virtual preamp collection, virtual tube collection, the virtual console collection, and the virtual tape machines. This gives a subtle effect, but I run all my tracks through most of these because it adds a little glue, cohesiveness, and analog warmth to the entire mix. That's it for now. Stay tuned to this channel for more episodes, which are coming very soon. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe and follow us on facebook.com slash sonicdrivestudio. Thanks so much for watching.